here that starts off well, it looks like it has nothing to do with integration to begin with. So it says show that 4x plus 22 on x plus 6 times x plus 4 equals, and then you've got a pair of fractions on the right hand side. So when you're asked to show a result, what you need to do is to start with one side, the left or the right, and then work with it, simplify, manipulate, adjust it so that it looks like the other side. Um, the thing you cannot do is show, you know, start from this line here and then just start manipulating, right? Because the reason why that doesn't work is suppose you start with two things that happen to be equal, like four equals, you know, two times two. Suppose we were asked to prove this, okay? Well, if four equals two times two is my first line of working, uh, what I might do is I might say, oh, well, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's subtract four from both sides. That's two times two take away four, uh, four times four on minus four on the left is, uh, that's zero. Um, this is four minus four, that's also zero. And I'm like, oh, zero equals zero. That's great, but it doesn't actually prove anything. Um, this doesn't constitute a proof. What you've got to do is start with one side and move to the other. So let's get rid of all of this. When I have a look at this, um, for me, uh, most people's brains tends to go from complicated and messy to simple. And we've been training you for years to simplify algebraic expressions. So when I look at this, which side looks simpler? The left-hand side looks simpler. So I'm going to make that my end point. The right-hand side looks messier. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to write right-hand side, RHS, equals, I'm just going to quote it, 2 over x plus 4 uh, plus 2x plus 10 all divided by x squared plus 10x plus 24. Now, when you're proving one of these things, I know I want to end up at the left-hand side, so I keep one eye on the algebra I'm manipulating, and then I keep my other eye on my destination, as it were, to make sure I'm getting closer at every step. Now, I notice that the left-hand side is a single fraction, and the bottom there has been factorized. So what that suggests to me is that the two fractions I've just written on the right hand side need to be number one, factorized, and number two, combined into one fraction. So let's have a go at that. There's not much to factorize with this left hand fraction, so I'm just gonna leave it for a brief moment. On the right hand side here, I've got 2x plus 10, and then on the denominator, I've got this quadratic expression, x squared plus 10x plus 24. So if I want to factorize this, I'm searching for a pair of numbers, they add to 10, they multiply to 24, and you've got a big hint in the original question, I'm thinking that it's highly likely I'll end up with x plus 6 times x plus 4. And sure enough, if you go ahead and check the numbers, that is indeed what you get. So now I've got the factorizing down, that's good. What's left is to combine these two fractions into one. So in order to do that, I need a common denominator. Because I've already got this common factor of x plus four, all I need to do is multiply the left-hand fraction by x plus six on x plus six. So if I do that on the top, there's the numerator. Here's the denominator, x plus six, x plus four. Um, this fraction here hasn't changed, so I'm going to cheat a tiny bit, so this is faster for you to watch. And now I have the same denominator on both fractions, so I can combine these two together. I've got two lots of x plus 6, I've got a 2x plus 10, and then all of that is divided by this new denominator that I've just found, x plus 6, x plus 4. We're almost there. On the numerator, again, looking back at where I need to end up, on the numerator, I just want to expand and collect like terms. So it seems to me I'm going to get 2x plus 12 plus 2x plus 10. That bit hasn't changed, so this is looking promising. I'm dividing by x plus 6, x plus 4. And now I'm pretty much there, aren't I? You can see the 2x plus 2x gives you 4x. The 12 plus 10 gives you 22. Everything is divided by the denominator which hasn't changed for a few lines now, and that's what I was required to find. So I complete my proof by saying, as required. Okay, so that question didn't seem like it had much to do with calculus, and it didn't until you get to part two. The last question says, hence find the integral of, and then you get this expression in here. Now, you need to pay close attention to this word, hence. Occasionally you'll see the word hence or um, sometimes a variation on this is hence or otherwise. You'll see this in a question which means something very specific about how you're expected to solve the question. When you see hence what that means is 
The thing you just showed, that result that came from the earlier part, you need to use that. When you see the phrase, or otherwise, what they're essentially saying is, well, if you've got some other wonderful way to solve this problem, then go for it. But otherwise, we're trying to give you a nudge in the right direction. This question here, part two, just says hence. That means it doesn't give you an option. You absolutely must use part one in order to solve part two. Thankfully, this makes it dramatically easier. So how do we use part one to solve part two? The thing that I notice, if you look at these two parts together, is that 4x plus 22 over x plus 6 times x plus 4, this thing we're being asked to integrate in here, it is equivalent to, or it's exactly identical, to the left-hand side of the equation that we were working with in part 1. So part 2 is asking us to integrate something that appeared in part 1. Now, if they're asking us in part 1 to show these two things are equal, and then they say in part two, hey, integrate this thing. Well, that means integrating this is the same as integrating this. You can integrate either of them if they are indeed the same function. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna say this is equal to the integral of, and instead of writing the left-hand side of the equation, I'm gonna write the right-hand side of the equation. So that is two over x plus four, and then I'm adding, what have I got here? Um, 2x plus 10, lose track of myself, 2x plus 10 divided by x squared plus 10x plus 24. And all of that I'm integrating with respect to x. Now, how does this help at all? Like it's got more stuff in it. If anything, it's messier. It's messier, but it's messier in a way that's helpful because even though this is much longer than the you know, thing that's being asked to integrate in part two, because it's longer, precisely because it's longer, I can tackle each part individually. So let's have a look at the first expression, two over x plus four. What's this equal to? When I integrate, it's gonna be two natural log of x plus four. And again, I've got those absolute value signs there. Then when I have a look at the next one, two x plus 10. Look carefully at that. 2x plus 10 is not a coincidence. Do you notice the 2x is just above an x squared and uh, this 10 is just above the 10x? You've got an f dash on f situation here, right? So therefore, the integral of this is just log of whatever the denominator was, which in this case is x squared plus 10x plus 24. And then of course, I add my constant of integration. So the whole point of part one was actually to write the integral in a way that we could deal with in part two. And this I think is, you know, done, but if you wanted to simplify this even further, you could use uh, one of the log laws that we've seen earlier on in the paper um, by taking this right hand log, which is log of x squared, um, or x squared plus 10x plus 24, which I've already written, um, I can write that as log of x plus 4, x plus 6. So this guy on the right hand side, I can actually break into two different functions. So it's 2 log x plus 4, plus log of x plus 4, and log x plus 6, plus my constant. You can see here what I've created is some actual like terms. I've got a single log of x plus 4 here and then I've got two of them over on the left. So that leaves me with 3 log of absolute value x plus 4 plus log absolute value of x plus 6 plus my constant of integration and you're finally done. Though it is worth saying, you know, by, the, by this point here, you have done the integration and all this stuff underneath is just making it nice and neat.